It is once more time to return to this rain-soaked world to bring attention to the slippery little critters that inhabit it, who are back in abundance. Does one need to watch the previous two videos? No. Would it help better understand this video? No. Let's waste no time and get right into it. For convenience, this will cover the slug cats in order based on their lore appearance, from oldest to newest. And everything in this video is guaranteed to be 100% inaccurate. What? This poor little thing is so full of microplastics that its blood can be used as filament to 3D print needle-like spears which might be a good thing, for it has no mouth and must feed, using its needles to suck the very marrow from the bone of whatever it impales. Keeping in mind it prefers fresh, never frozen internal juices, so it better still be squirming. It starts off at a seemingly unknown location, that turns out to be outskirts, but we can't stick around for long, so it's off to the industrial complex. Seems pretty simple to me. To roughly explain, this little thing was engineered to be a messenger. It also possesses the ability to tune into radio frequencies. But now isn't the time to be sitting around bumping tunes. Stepping into garbage wastes. Seems about the same, except for the pools of acid. Those are new. Given the... Um, creatures, the Jesus Christ, that inhabit this region, it's not sad nor pathetic that I was forced to remain here for at least an hour due to poor karma. Right? Since we're here for a while, this is a great time to explore some of the upsides to this slug cat. Turns out being able to carry two spears simultaneously is highly beneficial. And did you know Spearmaster is one of the lightest of all the slug cats? How fascinating, I hear you exclaim. Why ever would you be telling us this fact? We've now arrived at the waterfront facility, which is shoreline prior to the housing crisis and its consequences. Next is climbing up and crossing over a sky bridge, which connects two familiar puppets. Taking a right and crawling through the advanced internals of a highly intelligent toaster like a rat through a PC tower, and throwing hands with malware bites eventually leads to Moon's chamber. And she's looking better than ever. Mostly. After being blessed with the gift of basic literacy, it's time to fulfill the role of a messenger, crossing back over the sky bridge. Making way through Five Pebbles hardware, which only has a very minor case of the rot. Unlike Moon, Pebbles isn't quite as pleased to see us. For you see, our creator and fellow iterator, Seven Red Suns, had previously convinced Pebbles to do some risky trading in the stock market, causing him to lose it all. No longer wanting to take financial advice from Suns, Pebbles has decided to forge his own path with NFTs, and also ripped a pearl out from within us, which is now a burden we must carry. We make haste back towards Moon's structure with the help of a friendly little worm, so we can tell on five pebbles for being, quite honestly, a bit of a bastard. Alas, there's not much Moon can do, only able to wipe and record an mp3 file on this message pearl, and tasking us with delivering it to a radio tower located all the way over at the Sky Islands. Given the prowess of which I use this grapple worm, this is light work, taking no time at all and quickly reaching the region before scaling up the 5G tower to deliver Moon's final message. For a creature that can Gmod prop spawn spears, that was surprisingly peaceful. Let's change that. Introducing a slug cat with an explosive personality, alongside being a single mother who had two kids, past tense. As for the father, he went to the local scav merchant to get a pack of bubble weed and never returned. Speaking of scavengers, it's a strained relationship, to put it lightly. Explaining why this grieving mother is beefing with the funny monkeys is for another time time better spent reducing them to a fine red mist. 
An action made easier thanks to the artificer having saliva laced with nitroglycerin, and a step-by-step -step wikiHow tutorial on making a pipe bomb. Not to mention an explosive jump and eruptive burst that can deflect thrown weapons or stun nearby threats. If all else fails, simply maul them to death. Starting off post-slaughter and stumbling across a Nokia flip phone that bonds with this walking bomb threat. The scene is set in garbage waste, close on the timeline to Spearmaster, which means those skin-melting pools of highly concentrated Nickelodeon slime are still present. In order to leave, a small scavenger toll must be bypassed, and they're not accepting pearls. This means a war of attrition, the attrition part being how long my mental state can withstand dying to these spear-throwing rat bastards, eventually resorting to the sentient smokescreen, using the cover to quickly eliminate one unfortunate scav and dragging him along for the ride. But why? Turns out being basically the physical embodiment of violence doesn't reflect kindly on one's karma, locking it at the lowest level, with the only exception being visiting the angelical octopi. Luckily, you can use these freshly slaughtered primates as a semi-portable karma cache. Stepping into the cooler shoreline is a good time to bring up an important aspect of this hate-filled critter. She reacts to water just about as well as potassium, so don't stay under for too long. We once again ascended the sky bridge, avoiding the scavenger kill squads in my area, eventually traversing the place known as Australia due to its assorted spiders and being upside down. Sometimes when taking a rest in one of the many shelters, there's a chance of having a flashback, slowly uncovering more and more of the events that occurred to lead to our current scavenger slaughter situation. Starting off with lots of fun, family moments, just a tiny bit of thievery, and finally, death. Now you're caught up, and it's up the wall we go, enjoying the stunning views from above the clouds and partaking in a fun hobby called genocide. Reaching the top gives a lovely view of a city that's long since been abandoned by its original occupants. If only we could go there. Well, if it isn't the assortment of pebbles himself. And it turns out this floating TI-84 calculator that's been following along is actually a citizen ID. Soon to be anti-citizen as Pebbles can't catch a break, having not only the rot manifesting itself in his GPU mining operations, but also an infestation of scavengers atop his structure. Naturally, he's noticed our abject hatred of their entire species and wants to capitalize on that. So we're granted an all-access Disney Fast Pass, which allows entry into Welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen or been chosen to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centers. Anti-citizen reporting. Mission to find electric for the next one. Let's grenade. The metropolis is a lovely city. Besides the hordes of scavengers, including the elite kill squads, hunting me mercilessly. But hey, at least they've still got advertisements. Capitalism is thriving. And now it's time for the main event. Eliminating the figurehead to this entire scav community. Introducing the Scavenger King. After a well-thought and definitely fair TF2 MGE 1v1 with no outside interference, victory is mine, and I've claimed the throne, solidifying my unending bloodlust, locking karma at the lowest level, stuck in an endless cycle of violence and bloodshed. Now let's move on to unending hunger and the advanced use of alchemy in daily life. 
This is one hungry lad, with a large appetite to appease, made easier by pulling a ratatouille and combining two foods to create a firework of flavors. But the combinations don't end at just the Wendy's 4 for 4. Why stop at food? Combine a simple stone and red fern for some pretty firecrackers, but mix in a stone once more to construct a bomb. Sacrifice an entire creature for a single hit of drugs, or recreate the miracle of life. Confused? Consult the table. That's not even getting started on the bottomless void that is this creature's stomach. Able to pull out an assortment of random objects, some more powerful than others, and others more alive than some. Now that imposing size ain't for naught, this much heft makes one's body a weapon. Throwing it from the top rope would reduce any creature's bones to dust and turn their neck into a right angle, while sliding around hits like a truck. Specking into all strength with no agility leaves this slug cat exhausted easily, even from throwing a single spear. However, that spear is thrown with about the same force as a fucking railgun. With that sorted, let's discuss the purpose of this rotund individual. Besides a silly mission like discovering a new home for an entire population of slug cats, the much more important goal as a connoisseur of fine cuisine is tasting an assortment of different foods, ranging from the humble batfly to some much more unique tastes. Now, hunting dangerous beasts such as these might seem an impossible task, but with an explosive, a pretty magical flower, and another explosive, I am become death destroyer of worlds. Woe, singularity be upon ye. Strange question, did you perhaps happen to miserably fail your last hunter run? No, no, there isn't any particular reason for me asking this. And so the journey continues, traveling everywhere from the dark, cavernous New York subway system to high up into the clouds to fulfill our quest for peak consumption. Eventually, there is just one last morsel left, and only one place to get it, so it's time to scale the wall. Except that's not quite true, as thanks to the wonders of alchemy once more, this highly complex bit of engineering can simply be conjured. But since we're here, might as well give the old collection of small stones a visit. Naturally, he admires the impressive curves of our form, and kindly unlocks the outer perimeter of his testing grounds. Making haste back down into the ground towards the rail lines and going even further beyond leads to one last gate into the outer expanse. An almost alien world, filled with completely unique plant life and a whole new ecosystem. We're so close to the end, so best to not dilly-dally. Utilizing this thing that I'm not sure how it even breathes to leap across the vast landscape eventually leads up a tree to reveal a fellow slug cat, though one not nearly as rounded. Following them finally leads back home, and that concludes this definitely not exaggerated story. You're also now a father, and that's free calories. Found all that to be a bit dry? Then don't worry, you'll find this next one quite hydrating. This slug cat isn't like the others, it's aquatic in nature. Thriving when sopping wet, soaked, soggy, saturated with water. This little creature is also what I'd affectionately refer to as on crack, having all its moves done so at a rapid pace. Don't like your situation? Just leave, which is the right mindset to have when starting off a drainage system. Now it's time to fulfill the usual obligation of giving Pebbles his annual visit from the creatures he's grown to tolerate. A trip made simple given the speed of this wet mouse, making light work of even the wall. Finally dropping inside his chamber reveals Pebbles in his worst condition yet. He keeps mumbling something about diamond hands, but I'm not sure what that means. Thankfully within his mutterings he requests we remove his remaining mass refraction cell from its chambering before delivering it to a certain friend down by the shore we know quite well. Meaning we'll be traveling deep into the almost unrecognizable insides of his structure, looking more like rot with a side of hardware at this point, and introducing the even larger Mother Longlegs. One must survive by making the most of the speedy movement to not become one with the rot, 
Exploring deep within eventually leads to stumbling across the aforementioned power cell, which also has the added benefit of being able to be activated to harness its anti-gravity abilities. After saying one last goodbye to Pebbles, it's time to fulfill his final request. Thus, we travel back down a familiar route we've taken many a time, taking in the familiar sights and scenery, alongside getting jumped by the ever-present ecosystem. Though being able to manipulate gravity itself does make this trip a breeze, we're finally face to face with looks to the moon, who hints, not so subtly, that the chamber for the cell is deep underwater, and that it'd be an arduous task to even try. So naturally, we backtrack into shoreline before diving deep beneath the water's surface, entering the gate that leads to Moon's now mostly flooded structure. It's here we'll face a variety of creatures, like the eel lizard, everyone's favorite aquatic hydraulic brass, big jellyfish, and the jumper cables have the ability to swim, so I hope you like cooking toast in the bathtub. Swimming through these murky waters is a disorienting task, made even harder by the barely visible tunnel markers. Thankfully, with enough trial and error, and error, and error, we locate the chamber and slot the refraction cell into its housing. This starts up the gravity shift within the structure, causing the water to begin flowing, whisking us away through the pipes and leading to an unknown location. Things are a bit chilly here, and perhaps this new region is foreshadowing for the future. Exploring this new place while a light powdering of snow falls gently through the crisp, cold air is quite relaxing, but we've got to get back to the blue Muppet, so let's step on it. We find the gate needed to return and drop once more to Moon's chamber, who is finally looking like even a fraction of her past self, able to attempt contacting Pebbles once more. And thus, that leaves just one single slug cat to cover, and all I can say is, I want some of whatever the hell the devs were on. Can't have even a second of normal, starting off inside the void as this fluffy green creature before awakening in a world blanketed with pure white snow. Possessing a long tongue that can be used to maneuver around this familiar but different environment at the cost of having hollow bones to be light enough to do so, resulting in an extremely frail body incapable of using spears and being highly susceptible to damage. Making matters worse is that much like its fluff, the saint's diet is all green, having a seizure at just the mere concept of eating meat. The final nail in this slug cat shaped coffin is that the rain has stopped only to be replaced with the ever-present threat of a raging Dairy Queen blizzard that will cause this poor brittle thing to succumb to the cold if shelter or warmth isn't found. First crafting, now this. They turned my beloved nature documentary sim into a goddamn survival game. With little to no guidance, we'll just aim for the max karma level as seen in the Void Sea, done by visiting the many echoes, most of which thankfully seem to be in the same spot within their now snow-covered regions. Oh, and since it's nearby, let's give our good friend Five Pebbles a visit. A trip down to the now desolate fields leads to an echo, raising our karma to the starting line of most slug cats. After bypassing the somehow still alive fields of carnivorous grass with the use of the moon shoes creature, we reach the chasm with this echo. Next, we travel to the frigid waters of shoreline where the creatures during our underwater expedition have breached the surface. Moon is still doing well enough, spitting some cryptic message which I'm not sticking around to listen to, heading atop her shelter for yet another slice of that karma pie. Journeying to the gate that led to Shaded enlightens us of Pebble's fate, as his structure has crashed down to create a mangled mass of debris. <laughs> There is once again an echo within these broken remains, leaving just one more to find. Scaling these jagged cliffs finally leads to what is now barely even a hollow shell. We'll leave him to listen to his fading music pearl, at least for now. How fitting that the final echo is within my favorite region, Drainage System, which has become an overgrown jungle beneath the ground, free from the icy chill of the blizzard and rich with life. There's actually less water than before, now that's an improvement, along with a section filled with large bioluminescent mushrooms, and nearby is the Echo, 
Finally, reaching max karma causes some unexpected changes, mostly unlocking the ability to go super sane and utilizing one's third eye as a guiding crosshair to forcefully align creatures' chakras, making them ascend. That's right, Saint's special power is being Christian, which we will now use to go spread the good word of the Lord to those that have wronged us. Of course, we can't forget the close friends that have been there for us since the start. Ever heard of that famous children's book written by Margaret Wise Brown and illustrated by Clement Hurd? <laughs> oh, you haven't? Well, it's called Goodnight Moon. Oh man, I almost feel bad. Uh, m maybe I shouldn't. Next up. P Pebbles? Pebbles, is that you? A.I. Art. Well, that's it. Left alone in this vast, empty world with just the silly monkeys as company. Time to head down into the depths to ascend, and that's not how it's supposed to look. <coughs> Welcome to the Rubicon. A twisted realm constructed from the fragments of a distant past, filled with gilded beasts of the most dangerous sort. Armed with only our wits and also the godly ability to chi blast whatever gets close. We'll have to fight our way through arenas, eliminating the guardians that block our path and feasting on the eggs of these hellish bugs to sustain ourselves. It'll be a long, treacherous fight, all while a mockery of the regions we've once traveled sets the scene. But after enough trial and tribulation, we are rewarded with a moment of peace, floating aimlessly through a shattered place, finally crawling into a false chamber that's fracturing at the seams where two friends are reunited. Then they say some things that are probably real cool and lore heavy, but I ain't reading all that, pressing forward or in this case up, swimming into a familiar scene that's been flipped on its head, a trip into the void sea our final destination. Evil worm god be light, my child, don't put all your money into the blockchain. So that's the end. For those curious, I'm unsure if I'll make another lore video covering Downpour, at least not anytime soon. While this is my favorite game, there's only so much content I can make for my style. I hope you all understand. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, leak and subscribe.